हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू यू ऑल टू रॉयसन क्रिएशन यूट्यूब चैनल इन दिस वीडियो लेट एस वॉच द एनिमेटेड वीडियो ऑफ द लेसन जेंटलमैन ऑफ रियो एन मेडियो रिटर्न बाय युवान ये ये सेडिलो रियो एन मेडियो इज अ ब्यूटिफुल विलेज एट न्यू मेक्सिको in the usa the people there spoke spanish language they lived an old man named don anselmo who was respected by all the people up there in the mountains don anselmo's house was small and wretched but quaint he tilled the same land his ancestors had tilled The little creek ran through his land. His orchard was gnarled and beautiful. He had 4 acres of land. He wanted to sell his property to the Americans due to some reasons and they were ready to buy it for $1200. The Americans did not know Spanish language. So They approached the writer Juan A. A. Cedillo, who knew English as well as Spanish language, but it took months of negotiation to come to an understanding with Don Anselmo. He was in no hurry. What he had the most of was time. After many days, he came into the office of the writer to sign the sale deed. then he removed his hat and gloves slowly and carefully when he did that the writer was reminded of charlie chaplin then then the old man bowed to all those who were in the room don anselmo we have made a discovery you remember that we sent that surveyor that engineer up there to survey your land so as to make the deed well he finds that you own more than 8 acres he tells us that your land extends across the river and that you own almost twice as much as you thought and now don anselmo these americans are buena gente they are good people and they are willing to pay you for the additional land as well at the same rate per acre so that instead of $1200 you will get almost twice as much and the money is here for you friend i do not like to have you speak to me in that manner i know these americans are good people and that is why i have agreed to sell to them but i do not care to be insulted i have agreed to sell my house and land for $1200 and that is the price the writer argued with don anselmo but it was useless finally he signed the deed and took the money but refused to take more than the amount agreed upon Then he put on his ragged gloves took his stick and walked out with the boy behind him A month later the Americans had moved into Rio and Medio They had replastered the old house pruned the trees patched the fence and moved in summer One day they came back to the office of the writer to complain the children of the village were overrunning their property they came every day and played under the trees built little play fences around them and took blossoms when they were spoken to they only laughed and talked back good naturedly in spanish 
the writer sent a messenger up to the mountains for Don Anselmo. It took a week to arrange another meeting. When he arrived, he repeated his previous preliminary performance. He wore the same faded cutaway, carried the same stick and was accompanied by the boy again. He sat down with the boy behind his chair and talked about the weather. Finally, the writer broached the subject. Don Anselmo, about the ranch you sold to these people. They are good people and want to be your good neighbors always. When you sold to them, you signed a document, a deed, and in that deed, you agreed to several things. One thing was that they were to have the complete possession of the property. Now, Don Anselmo, it seems that every day the children of the village overrun the orchard and spend most of their time there. We would like to know if you, as the most respected man in the village, could not stop them from doing so in order that these people might enjoy their new home more in peace. We have all learned to love these Americans because they are good people and good neighbors. I sold them my property because I knew they were good people, but I did not sell them the trees in the orchard. This was bad Don Anselmo. When one signs a deed and sells real property, one sells also everything that grows on the land and those trees, every one of them, are on the land and inside the boundaries of what you sold. Yes, I admit that. You know, I am the oldest man in the village. Almost everyone there is my relative and all the children of Rio and Medio are my sobrinos and niotos, my descendants. Every time a child has been born in Rio and Medio, since I took possession of the house from my mother, I have planted a tree for that child. The trees in that orchard are not mine, say no. They belong to the children of the village. Every person in Rio and Medio, born since the railroad came to Santa Fe, owns a tree in that orchard. I did not sell the trees because I could not. They are not mine. There was nothing the Americans and the writer could do. Legally, the Americans owned the trees, but Don Anselmo had been so generous, refusing what amounted to a fortune for him. It took most of the following winter to buy the trees individually from the descendants of Don Anselmo in the valley of Rio and Medio. <laughs>